series, we've been, we've been talking about atmosphere, and we've been talking about how oftentimes we don't think about our surroundings. We don't think about how it affects us and how we affect it. Oftentimes we get into a rut and we just begin to speak negative things. We begin to do things that affect the atmosphere negatively. And as a result, it turns around and starts affecting us negatively. We start getting in the, in the mully grubs and we find ourselves trudging away in that place. And, and, and we need to just realize that you can make a change. Changing yourself will change the atmosphere. So we've been focusing on that. And we, we talked a little bit about being intentional about the kind of atmosphere we're creating here in this place, and hopefully in your personal life, all right? Um, We want to be an atmosphere, or we want to create in this place an atmosphere of grace, where people don't have to earn your affection, where we can just love one another based upon grace, all right? And and we we want to do that. We have to realize uh, God created people to be who they are. All right? And we want them to be who God wants them to be. We don't want to try to remold and reshape people into our image. He's already created them in His image. So we're going to give people grace as they grow into the fullness of what God wants them to be. We, we are going to purpose to be in a place that has an atmosphere of love where we're willing to sacrifice ourselves for other people. Where our needs and our wants become secondary to the needs and the wants of the people that we're here to minister to. We're here to love one another. All right? We want to be an atmosphere of 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 travail. In other words, where people are giving birth to ministry and giving birth to those things that God has placed within them. Um, That's the kind of church we want to be. That's the kind of church we're going to be. Where people are constantly in that mode or in that method of struggle to bring forth what God has placed within them. All right, we talked about that last week. Um, if you missed any of those uh, sermons that we've done, any of those, you can find them online. Um, we can also get you copies of those if you so desire. But but it's important for you to begin to think about those, not just here, but in your own life. All right, how are you bringing those things together in your own life? But tonight, I want to conclude by talking about an atmosphere of service. I've been preparing for our new series on, on Wednesday nights, and, and my heart is full with this idea of ministry and the idea that we are here to serve one another. All right, My heart is just ringing and resonating with this idea of service because as a church, if we're going to grow, we need more people who are willing to serve. Okay? Um, If you're part of any organization, if you're a part of anything, you realize that you cannot grow bigger than your foundation. We could go out today and build a house, and we can make it a million square feet. But if that million square feet is placed on a foundation that is only 12 by 12, that, that structure will not stand. You can only build as large as your foundation, and you are the foundation. You are the ones that we are going to build this church upon. Jesus himself said, upon this rock I will build my church. Okay, Upon you guys, upon this foundation, we're going to build. But we can only build as big as our foundation. So if there are only three people serving, we can only build three people's worth of kingdom. If there are ten people serving, we can build ten people worth of service, of, of kingdom. If we get everyone serving then what that's going to do is that's going to increase our base. And as that base increases, we need more people to serve. And really, that's what we're all about here. Here at One Way, we are not about just having church. We are about getting people from the place of not knowing God to serving God. That's the reason the church is here. We are here to reach people, offer them truth, accept responsibility for their growth, develop their ministry passion, and send them forth. All right? We are here to make people servants of the Most High God. That's our reason for being here. Tonight, as we talk about this, understand the idea of minister. Uh, To minister means to serve. If we're going to grow, we're going to have to create an atmosphere of service. An atmosphere of ministry. Where we are more concerned about serving others than being served. All right? You understand what I'm saying? If we are going to reach people, we're going to have to be more concerned about serving them 
than being served ourselves. That's an atmosphere of service. When we stop looking at ourselves and we begin to look beyond ourselves and see the needs of other people. Jesus called us to serve in John chapter 13, beginning in verse 1. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that His hour was come, that He should depart out of the world unto the Father, having loved His own which were in the world, He loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he has come from God and went to God, he riseth up from supper and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. And then picking up in verse 12. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, he was sat down again, and he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so am I. If then I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given unto you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than him who has sent him. If ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Heavenly Father, tonight I pray that you would just burn this image into our hearts. That Father God... Christ, one of the last sermons that He gave before going to the cross was this illustrated sermon on how to serve in the kingdom of God. Father God, I pray that we would glean from this lesson and that we would begin to live it out in our lives, that we would not be hearers only, but that we would become doers of the Word. And Father God, that we would do so for Your glory. We thank You tonight. Speak to us and have Your way. This is Jesus giving us an illustrated sermon of how to serve in the kingdom of God. And the first thing we can learn from this illustrated sermon is that ministry is not about you. Serving in the kingdom of God is not about you. Jesus, who knew what was about to happen, Jesus knew that He was about to be betrayed, He knew that He was about to be arrested. He knew that He was about to be beaten. He knew that He was about to go to the cross. He knew that He was about to die. He knew that His disciples were about to bail. Jesus had every reason in the world that night to make it about Him. (laughs) Well, you guys just don't understand what I'm about to go through. You guys just don't understand what's about to come upon me. And you guys, if you, if you were really in tune with me and what I was doing, then you guys would be here and you'd be comforting me and you'd be serving me and you would, you would be helping me in my darkest hour. But Jesus didn't do that. Knowing everything that He knew, instead of demanding them to comfort Him, He serves He gives them the example and says, look, understand what I'm about to do for you. God, Jesus could have done so much with that short period of time. He could have gotten anything He wanted. Some of us get a cold and we milk it for all it's worth. I know I do. Jesus could have done that. I mean, think about David's men. In in the story of David, David and and his men, they were in the midst of a battle and the enemy had taken over his home city of Bethlehem, and David says, you know what? I long to have a drink from the well of Bethlehem. And the Bible says that his men, because they loved him so much, risked life and limb to break through the enemy line to bring him a cup of water. David wasn't even dying. Can you imagine Jesus? What he could have asked his disciples on that very moment. And I'd be willing to bet if they had known what was about to happen, they would have done anything. But Jesus did not begin to share all of His mess. He didn't begin to share all of the woes and and whys and all of that stuff. 
Because he realized that he was there to minister and it's not about him. It's not about Jesus. When you stand to minister, it's not about you. It's not about you. Nobody needs to hear about your problems. Nobody needs to hear about your concerns because you're not here to make them feel better when you're doing that. You're here to gain sympathy for yourself when you begin to tell everybody about all the stuff that's wrong. Oftentimes we miss this point. Because here we are moaning and groaning and sad and this happened to me and this happened to me and we're upset and I'm this and I'm that. And the whole time we're sharing those things, there's somebody right next to us who needs us to minister to them. Maybe they just lost a loved one. Maybe they're going through some trials. Maybe they're going through some pain. Maybe there's something that, that they need, but we miss what they need because we're too focused on us. Jesus gives us the illustration and says, look, it's not about you. It's not about you. Jesus did not focus on His emotional state at that particular moment. Where did Jesus deal with His issues? In the garden praying. He did not make His issues everyone else's issue. He was there to serve. His fear, His anxiety, His hurt, His anger, all of that was laid aside so that He could serve and give them an example of how to serve in the kingdom of God. We are to serve one another. But again, we often have trouble looking past ourselves in order to serve other people. We allow our anxiety, our hurt, our anger to completely interfere with our ability to minister. Because we're too focused on our needs that we miss other people's needs. If you don't believe that, attend a fellowship dinner. Attend a fellowship dinner. Not just here, but anywhere. Go anywhere there's food. And the moment it's dismissed, we pray, Amen. What happens? <laughs> Pushing, shoving, trying to finagle their way up into the front of the line. People who got there late, they're like, Hey, can I stand with you? Do you mind? Do you mind? I, gotta, I, got, I got to get my child something. And they know they're fixing a plate for them too. People are not concerned with anyone else. They're only concerned with one thing and one thing alone, and that's I am hungry. I'm hungry. And as a result, we don't care about anybody else. We're not worried about the fact that this person next to us hasn't eaten in three days. We just know we haven't eaten in six minutes. Well, I had dinner, but it really just didn't satisfy, so I need something else. See, that's the mentality that we have to stop. And we have to start saying, wait a second. Am I here to be served? Or am I here to serve? Because if I'm here to serve, then my mindset should be completely different. Because what ends up happening is the people who rush to the front of the line, they fill their place to the overflow. And they go and they, they find the best seat and they sit down and they begin stuff in their face. And then the people who come in at the end are scraping the bottom trying to get a spoonful of something. And then those people leave hungry and the people who were rushing to the front with no mindset of anyone else didn't think about the people who were coming behind them but filled their plate instead. Now what happens is that person goes home hungry and the people who were there first are throwing food away because now they're full. Do you realize that this is what was happening in the church when Paul addressed them in 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. In other words, they were coming together for communion. They were coming together for the Lord's Supper. And back then, it wasn't just a cup of juice and a piece of bread. It was a dinner. And it says, when you come together, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating, every one taketh before his, the other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. I don't praise you in this. He says, this is not right. 
You don't even have a mindset of anyone else other than yourself. And he says, it's not right. He says, you're taking everything and you have no concern with the people who have lack. If we are going to create an atmosphere of service, we're going to have to get out of the selfish mindset. And we're going to have to start thinking about other people. Do you realize that the next verse in that passage is the one that we read every time we do communion? Where we talk about, if a man exa- let a man examine himself. Let's, let, let's just go there. Let's go there. First, uh, First Corinthians chapter 11. The purpose of the supper, the communion, was to remember the Last Supper. What Jesus is, that illustrated sermon that Jesus is giving us. Jesus taught us how to serve, and, and, and when we fail to serve, we miss the whole point of communion. Understand it. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. It says, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till He come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. Pause. Not discerning the Lord's body. He is not talking about the cup and the bread. You are the body of Christ. We come together and we don't discern one another. We don't discern the body of Christ. We're here for us and us alone. Do you understand that that's eating and drinking unworthily? It's not just about sin in your life. It's about how you treat one another. How do we serve one another? What is our mindset when we come together? Communion means fellowship. But you can't have fellowship when you're only concerned about yourself. That is not fellowship. Fellowship is when you are more concerned with the person next to you than yourself. He says, for they do not discern the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Do you understand that today? And I hadn't thought about this till now, and I'd have to do some Scripture on this, and I challenge you to do the same. Don't take my word at it. But notice this line. They've not discerned the Lord's body, and for this cause many are weak and sickly, and many sleep. Many have died. Oftentimes we look at that and we say, well, they were sinning and they partook of communion and God struck them down. Perhaps it means more along the lines of you weren't mindful enough of the person next to you. And that person is sick. And that person is weak. And that person is dying because they have none and you have more than enough. Is that the real issue there? Is it because we're not discerning the body? Is it because we're not taking the time to look beyond ourselves that so many people are falling by the wayside because we're so focused upon us? My need. My desire. What I have to do. What's important to me. When in actuality, God is saying, wait a second. These people are what you should be, should be working towards. What you're doing is not nearly as, as, as important as reaching out to this individual right now. Again, I can't preach that as gospel truth, but I am going to study that out because I wonder if that's more of what he's talking about. It is eating the bread and drinking the cup unworthily isn't just about sin. It's about eating and drinking with no regard for others. Thinking only of yourself brings condemnation to yourself. That's the Word of God. That is the Word of God. And tonight, I'm not trying to bring guilt or condemnation, but I am trying to bring truth tonight. Because I would not be doing my job and I would not be doing you any favors if I didn't bring this to your attention, do you understand today that your, your service or the lack thereof has the ability to condemn your soul? Matthew chapter 25. 
Jesus tells the parable of the sheep and the goats. And I've talked about this before, but it just rings so true. Christians, okay? These are Christians. These are people in the church that he's talking about in Matthew 25. And he says there's two groups. There's sheep and their goats. Keep in mind, both are clean animals according to the law. Both are clean. And in the law, in Matthew, he's talking to the Jewish people. That's why he quotes Scripture so much. So when he starts talking about sheep and goats, all of a sudden they're not thinking clean, unclean. These are both clean. So Jesus uses this illustration. He says, look, on one side are the sheep, on the other side are the goats. Those that are on the right side, He's going to say to them, welcome into my grace, welcome into my peace, and enjoy the kingdom of God. Those to the left, He's going to send into eternal damnation. And the people on the left are going to look at Jesus and say, what did we do? What did we do? Obviously, these are people who are thinking, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven, shouting victory. And then they get there and realize, womp, womp. And Jesus looks at them and says this, When I was sick, you didn't visit me. You didn't serve. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was in need, you had no time. And they'll say, whoa, 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 wait a second, Jesus. When did, that, when did we ever do that to you? And he says, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Do you understand how those two things go together? That if we're not serving other people, if we're too focused upon ourselves to reach out and begin to serve the people around us, then we are bringing condemnation upon ourselves. That's the Word of God tonight. I realize that when it comes to service, there's a lot of people who just don't have the ability to do much. In other words, health reasons. Things in their life that just prevent them from being able to do as much as they want to do. I understand that. Again, I'm not trying to bring condemnation, but I am encouraging you to pray. But let's take an example this past month when we had our fellowship dinner. When everything was said and done, six people were left to clean everything up. Everyone had eaten, everyone had gone home, everyone was happy, 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 happy. Six people were left to clean up. And again, I realize the van had to take people home. Those people have to ride the van. I, I, I understand. All right? But think about this. The person who served the most that night was a lady that doesn't even attend in this church. She was the one here sweeping, cleaning, doing dishes, wiping tables, cleaning up, and she don't even attend here. I think there's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. Folks, we've got to start thinking about serving more than being served. Because the kingdom of God is all about serving others. If you're not serving, then you're not living in the kingdom of God. And by serving, I don't mean walking around being people's slaves. But I mean thinking about other people. When we went home Sunday night... Did anybody stop to think about the people who were going to stay late to clean up our mess? No. When we make a mess in the church, do we stop to think about who's going to have to pick that up? No. When we go out to eat, do we think about the people who don't have any? When we get together with our family, do we think about the people over here in the nursing home who haven't had a visitor in six years? Do we think beyond ourselves and start looking around at the people around us? Our passage says that before Jesus washed their feet, He removed His garments. Jesus stripped down and put a towel around His waist. This is not the last time that Jesus would be stripped. As Jesus went to the cross, they would strip Him of His garments and hang Him upon the cross naked as a sign of humiliation. 
But here in the upper room, His humiliation is self-inflicted. Jesus, Jesus purposely chooses to humble Himself and show humiliation by wrapping Himself with a towel and beginning to wash the feet of His disciples. If we are going to serve, we are going to have to take a position of humility. Having a modest opinion of your importance, your rank, or your status. In other words, we don't look at ourselves more highly than we ought to. If you're going to serve, you must be willing to humble yourselves. If you think about rank, and again, here at One Way, we don't practice rank. And in fact, as we talked about this morning in our, in our Discovering the Way class, most organizations are a top-down organization. If you're the leader, you're at the top, everybody else is there to support you. Here, we flip that on its head. If you're in leadership, you're here to support everybody else. Okay? That's the way the kingdom of God is supposed to work. All right? But let's pretend that we function like other people, and we wanted to talk about rank. Those who are at the top should go first. That means when we get ready to have fellowship dinner, nobody in this building should be eating before Pastor Ollie does. He's up here praying for somebody. You stay in your seat until he's done. And then Shirley should go next. And then me, then Tara, then our elders, and then everybody else comes behind them. If that's the way we were going to function, that's what, what we should do. But that's not how we operate. But think about this. Sunday night of our fellowship dinner, Tara was filling glasses. I was running around doing errands, making sure everybody had what they needed. Ollie was praying with people. Shirley was ministering to the kids. Annie had been back there fixing the dinner and making sure everything was ready for you. She's an elder in this church. My grandmother was back there. She's an elder in this church, and she's back there counting the money with Michelle, who's also a part of our leadership. All the leadership is serving. All everybody else is getting their fill. Do you realize today that the reason we do that is to set an example just like Jesus did. We are doing our best to set an example for you of servant leadership. What it means to serve in the kingdom of God, to be a leader in the kingdom of God, means that you serve. Jesus himself said, those that are going to be the chiefest among you must be the servant of all. We will set the example for you, but it is your job to follow the example. We should begin to think about serving more than being served. You have to be willing to humble yourself. We could easily sit up here and say, you know what? Uh-uh. I'm not serving anybody. I'm the pastor here. I'm not serving. I've been in that church where you're expected to bring their plate and their cup and make sure it never runs dry because they're the leader. It's not the way we operate here. And Pastor Ali, we don't expect people to serve us, but we do expect you to serve one another. We expect you to follow the example and begin to think beyond yourself and start thinking about the people that are behind you. Jesus himself said that what does it matter to be, to be invited to a, to a dinner and you take the chief seat just to be asked to move later? He says, isn't it better to just sit in the back and then be invited to come to the front? Right? Think about that. What, what position do you want to have? What position are you vying for? Because in the kingdom of God, the greatest position you can have is that of a servant. We're not complaining because we realize that we're here to serve. We're here to follow a biblical model where those who rank highest serve the most. But we also need to realize that the reason we're serving is to model that for you. I've heard ministry defined as seeing a need and meeting that need. When there's a floor that needs to be swept, I sweep it. When trash needs to be emptied, I empty it. When toilets need cleaned, I clean them. When walls need to be painted, I paint them. When a class needs to be taught, I teach it. When someone needs help, I help them. When people need greeted, I greet them. What is the needs that you see? We miss the needs because we're too focused on self. We're too focused on self and we miss the needs. I could easily sit there and say, no, that's below me. I shouldn't have to do that. 
I'm too busy. I'm too important. But I realize that's not true. We are all here to serve. Jesus gave us that illustrated sermon. After He washed their feet, He asked them, do you understand what I've done to you? He says, you see Me as Master and Lord, and I am. He said, I am your Master. I am the Lord. He says, so if I'm the Master, and if I can serve, then surely you can serve too. Do you understand today that if your Lord and Master can wash feet, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to wash feet too? If Jesus can humble Himself in the midst of all of His turmoil to serve, then what's our excuse? Well, I have a busy day tomorrow. I've got I to gotta go. No, Jesus had a busy day tomorrow. Jesus was going to pray all night. He was going to be arrested. He was going to be mocked and beaten throughout the night. He was going to be trampled all over the city for a mock trial. He was going to be scourged. He was going to be beaten. He was going to carry His cross to, the, to, the, to Golgotha and He was going to die there, nailed to a cross. That's a busy day. Jesus had a busy day. Your day isn't that busy. Well, people don't appreciate it anyway. Or are they selling you out for 30 pieces of silver? Are they crying out for your, for your crucifixion? You don't serve to be appreciated. You serve to be a blessing. Well, those people did me wrong. Judas did Jesus wrong. He still got his feet washed. When you think about it, our excuses are pretty lame. There is no reason that we shouldn't have a mindset of service. None of us are dying tomorrow that we're aware of. None of us are going to have people bust through our door and take us captive, drag us off prison. Yet all of those things on His mind, Jesus said, you know what? Let me show you what it means to serve. That's the atmosphere we need in this place. Where when people come in, we're not focused on us as much as focused on them. When somebody walks in this for the very first time, you have no idea what they're going through. You have no idea what they've been through. And they might need you to encourage them. So don't use them to encourage yourself. Don't find the first person that walks through the door and tell them all of your woes and all of your trials and all of your pain and all that kind of stuff because you know what? It's not about you. It's not about you. Jesus said, I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. We are no greater than Christ. So if He can serve, so can we. If we're going to create that atmosphere, we're going to have to start looking beyond ourselves. For 2014, if this church is going to grow, it's going to be because we create that atmosphere of service. Where we put aside our excuses, we put aside all those other things. Because there's going to be times when we, what, we need people to be here at church for this reason because we're going to go out and we're going to talk to these people. We're going to minister to the people of this community. And we could all say, well, I can't be there. I got this going on. I got that going on. I understand things happen and things come up. I understand people work. I understand that. I don't want to come across in that tone. But I also want to encourage you to start thinking beyond yourself in what you do. What's more important, my needs or the people going to hell? What's more important? Taking my kid to karate? Or getting someone saved? What's more important? We have got to reprioritize our life and begin to put Christ at the center. And if we do that, we will become a people of service.